My name's Tracy Ledbetter. I was born in central, north central Indiana, and I currently live in Middle Tennessee, Franklin, Tennessee. It's hard to explain, but it'd probably be my dad. Anyone who knows him would say he has no faith at all, but I think he has more faith than anyone I've ever met. It's hard to explain why. He's not, um, one would not call him a religious man, although he's more in touch with God than anyone I've ever met. He doesn't, never been a churchgoer or anything of that nature, but he's a very, I think, a great contact with what most people would call God. Or him, his higher self, I guess. How does that play out in his life? What are... He seems to be at peace with himself. And he probably had a life where he probably shouldn't. Necess- most people would not think that would be the case. But it's the impression I've always had. I really don't have a concept of what we call God. I get, well, that's not a good way to state it. I don't believe necessarily in the terminology of God, because I think that degrades what I think of as God, brings it to more of a I think we paint God, we have to paint, most of us, I believe, paint God, paint a picture of God. Never mind, we all do. But we try to give it human form some in some sense, which in my, I don't think it has any type of human form. Um, I think it's much greater than God. To me, it's much greater than God. It's a combination of everything, of all that make, makes God or gods up. That's my concept of a higher power. Omni intelligence is a better word for it in my mind. Mm. That's that's what I think of. I would like I like to think it's beyond God. If that makes that's my feeling. Is no. there a, is there a term that you use or words that you use to describe the higher power that you connect with? How serious do you want to get? <laughs> serious as you yeah, want. I do have I do have certain terminology in my mind that I use. But ultimately, for conversation reasons, I would I would say an omni-intelligence. That's the way I see it. Um, ultimate intelligence, be it good or not good. Um, I'm not a... The concept of good and evil doesn't play into it. I just think it's an uh, supreme, ultimate... It's an omni-intelligence. That's the best word I can put to it. When was the first time in your life that you felt aware of this omni-intelligence? I really don't have a memory of not being aware of it. Um, I'm sure there was, but I never doubted it. I don't today. I don't seek it out. It's just always been, and I think it always will be for me. Um, That may explain a lot of things in my life, but... For me, that's what it is. It's not, it's always been present. You were telling me a story yesterday about your mother. You you saying some things to your mother when you were a child that resulted in her taking you to church. What were, what was that story? It was, I was four or five years old. So it's really hard to remember the actual contents of the conversation, but it was basically talking about reincarnation and, Soul, soul, I guess soul retrieval, maybe or rebirthing of of this intelligence, parts of this intelligence. Of course, we. And what happened? You were telling her what you thought, or she told you something. I don't remember what started the conversation. I was always a talker and tried to explain these things. I didn't quite understand at that age, and I still don't understand it all. Obviously, I don't think anyone does. But I don't know if that prompted her to put me on a good Christian path or if it was, you know, she was also searching, you know, for something. So, but we started going to church at that time for whatever reason or near that time, which was, ended up being a good thing. But you told her the way you, the way you thought reincarnation worked or what was it? Reincarnation or I probably, I'm sure I didn't use that word because I would not have been savvy enough to have ever known, to have known what it was, but it was basically there was a con- the bulk of the conversation I remember was about evolution and 
well, I think we would probably consider reincarnation now um, and how they must work together in some sense. It was more intelligent than either one of the two, so there had to be a combination of both, in my mind. So I was put on the creationism path right away. I'm sure there have been many times that that's occurred, but I, I see it more, of, it's been more of a safety net, probably, to, as far as my, me personally, more of a life-saving, like a hand reaching out. I've been in multiple car accidents, a couple of which I should have died in, obviously. Other dangerous situations that I've always walked away from unscathed. Um, whatever that is, luck, fate, higher power. I see it as a higher power. And that would be the, probably the best answer I have. That's what I see. As far as putting me on a particular path or showing me a way, I'm still looking for that the end result of, to your question, would be that I've, it hasn't fully developed yet for me. What that, the, the complete interaction is or what it means to me. Yeah, can you tell me about a time where you felt like that safety net played out in your life? I, one time in particular, I, um, I was attacked by two guys with knives. I had no weapon. It was totally unprovoked. It was just a weird situation and something scared them quite badly and they ran away. I don't know what it was. It wasn't my large, bulky body by any means. <laughs> so I think that would be one time. Um, I guess I've been in a few car accidents, two of which I really should have. Um, should have died, and I just walked out. None hurt well, I broke a thumb and, and bruised up in one of them, but um, I shouldn't. I probably should not have, mm -hmm. but who knows all about the impact. So, um, again, take this where you want to, but, um, you know, so what do you think, what do you think your work is in this lifetime? What do you think God's will, your higher power's will is for you? To try to understand my fellow man, I guess, and sometimes something arises to help myself or them out as a whole. At some point, I think that's, that will develop. I think that's my path this time around. It sounds simple, but Right now, that's what it is for me. And all, I mean, all of humanity, not just my peer group, or I think it's self-explanatory, but that's, that's what I mean by that. To see where where we're going and what we, what we become. Like we live in an incredible time currently, with current technology that we're aware of, that we're developing or it's redeveloping or whatever it is um, that we're are going to be able to see amazing feats um, by human you know by humanity that, and see where it goes if we actually use it for the betterment of man or or destruction of man so I think that's if, if only to witness that maybe that what it is for me and that alone would be exciting, or you know, it would be worth the journey. But maybe at some point be involved in whatever that becomes, or however it manifests itself. In what way, I don't know. But that's my feeling. I have a great wife. Maybe Who's sitting wife. right over there? Yeah. <laughs> I have two beautiful children, teenage girls. Another on the another child on the way. We don't know whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. So I have a lot to be grateful for. I live in a wonderful country so far. I live in, I mean, what top one percent of the world as far as wealth in the Ameri you know in America. I have a, I have a multitude of things I could make a list along that we don't need to repeat. You know, it's obvious things to me. 
don't have to worry about hot food or electricity, water, you know, shelter, the basic needs. They're stuff most of us here take for granted. That's not available to a great, you know, majority of the world population. So, and out of that one top one percent of the world, we probably live in the top three tenths of that one. You know, the one percent or maybe half of a percent of the world. I know it's half a percent, so I have a lot to be grateful for. I mean, I feel foolish when there's something that I'm not grateful for that I take for granted. Not foolish, but it's like that take a pause. It's just. I mean, we're so fortunate, it's unbelievable. It's hard to believe. So. Sounds corny, but if we could achieve peace, it would be great. I don't see that happening, but that would be nice to me, for everyone. <clears throat> not, I mean, you could say to end world hunger or things like that, and I'm not trying to be some great humanitarian because I'm certainly not, but I think that by just achieving peace for, you know, people here. Maybe it'll pave the way for whoever comes next. It would pave the way, but it would also end most of the other strifes that man has. What's the greatest difficulty you feel like you've overcome in your life? Um, hmm. It's a good, um, being an arrogant ass, I think, probably. Realizing it, correcting it. I may still be, but it might be part of being arrogant is <laughs> thinking you've overcome it. But I would have to say that's probably it. I really feel like I'm, I'm much further along than what I, 10 years ago, you know, now than I was. Um, becoming calm and relatively mild compared to what I, I used to be rather high strung short fused if you will so that's really I think this personal thing that's probably it how did, you, how did that come about for you? I think just a realization of um, unhappiness because of it's hard to put a words to it but just a self realization really thinking about it and stepping back from yourself and watching that person, not you know, trying to disassociate yourself from who you are in order to view your actions and then make a game plan or whatever clicks in the mind to make you address it. So, so far, that's one of the big ones. If you've always felt connected to this higher power, this omni-intelligence, mm -hmm. did how did that play into the days in which you felt arrogant or self-oriented versus the path out of that? Like, was there a, you know, I don't want to put words, any words That's in your mouth about any, but did that play a role? Was that the power to that path or no? The way I see it, it's when I stepped away from that thing, which always is, that constant, which is God or the higher power. And it's, I denied it, I didn't need it, I thought, you know, nobody does, is what I thought. And I think that is part of the, I may be coming back to the under, or the acceptance of it again. I left it, it never, it never left me. I mean, obviously, I may not be here if it had, but I think that's, was the, this is the interaction during that time, it's just because of, and maybe that's where the arrogance came out, it came from, was, trying to trying to separate thinking I don't need this um, at the core I'm exactly like they are and we're all created from the same seed or the same and that then they're ultimately exactly like I am um, we may have a different skin color different language levels of education or who it doesn't matter all the surface stuff that we have but ultimately, that we really are all the same when it gets right down to it. We're close. We have our own codes, but which, you know, to make us that's what makes us different. But we are we came from the same place, regardless of belief system or you know, is that I don't doesn't matter to me. In the end, we we all originated in the same place.
What irks you the most about uh, the world we live in? That's another long list. <laughs> There's several that are equal. Um, I'd have to say the biggest thing that irks me is the corruption of government and not just ours. It's all. Um, I don't care if they're socialist or democratic or what it is. There's corruption in general irks me the most. If it's religious corruption or it's mainly governmental corruption, um, that's my biggest irk. If, if I could change, I guess we had that question, but that would be, there was some way to implement change in that, which I don't view has been a possibility. And I normally think everything's possible, but I think it's so corrupt that we, we don't have influence even through voting. It's, that's my biggest hurt or biggest pet peeve or wh whatever it is. Um, that would definitely top the list. And just corrupt, corruption but mainly on a governmental level then it goes down from there from there I'd say it would be religious then corporate and it trickles down to the rest of us or most all of you know most of us in some way or there's some level of deceit or dishonesty because it's a norm you know That's, that would be my biggest thing. How, how does that tie into the whole idea of an omni-intelligence and a higher power? Um, you know, what is the spiritual lesson in all that corruption? Like, is, does it mean that that, does it mean we've all walked away collectively from that omni-intelligence, almost using the same metaphor of the arrogance you felt at one time in your life? Um, does it, um, what's the role of that higher power in ending that corruption and bringing back to a higher good. I mean, how does this all play out? I honestly don't know. I mean, I don't know that that's something anybody really knows. We might have a hunch, but I don't even have a hunch. I think that if we do as a group of, you know, as people collectively get back to whatever, wherever we need to be, I mean, who, I don't know the answer to that, but there has to be some turning point where enough of us start thinking about God or our higher power in the pure thought, in a pure form, not in some socially acceptable way. Or I go to church on Sunday because, I, you know, granny went and we have to go or my realtor goes and, or my, you know, my clients go. I mean, if we get in beyond that, that whatever it takes to do that is it's really not answering the question, but we have to get there before that question can be answered, I think. And then it may reveal itself as to what it what will happen for us as a group on, on this planet. I mean, we just saw that movie yesterday. We have limited resources, which are rapidly depleting. And the population's gone up. So what are we going to do? You know, will that God that's going to save all those poor bastards come down and clean up the earth and, you know, Wipe out half the population so we can sustain ourselves? Possibly. You know, are they going to come out and save everybody and take them to heaven? I don't, I don't believe that happens. But that's just my thought. I mean, it's something we have to do as a whole. Collectively, we are the omni-intelligence. That's the point. Um, it's not some mystical being. It's a collection. And we're, the, we're the collective. So how to bring that back together as a whole, because we're extremely fragmented in my mind, or my worldview, so I think the real question is, how do you get back to that core? Belief in the single source is the same as the whole to me. It's all the same. Um, you can fill the universe or the, you know, to use some biblical metaphor that, what is it, the dot of a pin or, you know. God is everywhere at once type of thing. That's the faith. My faith is believing that one part of the whole is equally as important as the whole. That's my faith. That's what I hold on to. Whatever that means. It means something to me. It may sound silly or childish, but or wishful is a better way. But to me, that's what it is. That's faith. It's that simple. It's very simple. That's why it's so difficult to, for most people to maintain it. Because it's too simple. It has to be complicated. It has to be so, there has to be so many angles, so many ways of studying it, so many ways to present it that it can't possibly last. 
it's not so complex that it's intangible. How, what a perfect way not to have faith. If you can't grasp it completely, it's a good way to keep keep it divided, keep it keep the whole apart. I think it's real, it's really simple. For me, it's very simple. If it were more complicated, I'd be wouldn't be doing this. I mean, I wouldn't have a I'd have some vision of faith, but not not enough to. I just wouldn't think about it. You know, just be. I'd go say my prayer and be done. Pretty, it's just a simple thought. It's a thought. It's a thought. That's what it is. Faith is thought. To, to me. And it's obviously many things and many other people, but that's what it is to me. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. This was fun.